Hello everybody. This video accompanies Notebook 2 of the series of videos Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is arrays and basic if statements. We will work again in the IPython notebook. Before I start, I go to the view command and I get rid of the little the pretty little header at the top and I get rid of the toolbar just to give me a little more space on making this video. As I said, we'll start out with arrays. And you might remember arrays are part of the NumPy package. So the first thing we do is we import NumPy. Import NumPy S NP, shift enter. And you might remember this means that from now on, all functions in the NumPy package we can call with np.functionName. For example, we can create an array. Last week we made arrays with linspace. This week we start out with making an array by explicitly entering all the values. Let's call the array x. x is equal to np.array, open parentheses. It asks for one object, and the object in this case is a sequence of numbers. And you can add some, give some other keyword arguments that we might talk about later. So we enter square brackets, and we'll give it 10 numbers. One, five, eight, four, six, three, seven, two, ten, and four. And we hit shift enter. X is now an array, so we can print X to the screen, and we can ask for the length of X. And the length of X is indeed 10. As, I, as we learned last week, we can do math on arrays. We can add arrays together, print X plus X, and that will add all the individual values in the arrays, term by term. So the first one is one plus one, which is, 2, 5 plus 5 is 10, 8 plus 8 is 16. We can also do x times x, and x times x does term by term multiplication. So the first one is 1 times 1 is 1, 5 times 5 is 25, 8 times 8 is 64. So remember, x is an array, it's not a vector. So x times x is not some mathematical or linear algebra thing like a dot product. It's simple term by term multiplication. What we can also do is we can have a function work on x. We can calculate the cosine of x. And it will calculate the cosine of every value in x. Well, not quite. Why not? Well, because cosine is part of the numpy package. So it's np dot cos. And that will work fine. We can access individual items of the array by specifying the index. And the index starts at zero. So let's print x again. And the very first value in the array has index zero. So if we say print x zero, we get the number one. If we print x number three, that is zero, one, two, three, we should get the number four. We can also print from 0 to 4. And what do we get then? We get 1, 5, and 8. We get 0, 1, 2, and not number 3. So this syntax means we start at 0, we go till 3, but we don't include 3. So we get numbers 0, 1, and 2. Uh, we can, of course, also start at something else in 0. We can start at number 3 and go to number 6. So if we count down 0, 1, 2, this is index 3, that is indeed 4, index 4, index 5, and index 6 is not included. We can also access the last number in the array. The last number in the array, the index of the last one, well, this is number 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The last one has number 9. That's a little odd. How did that work? Well, the length of x is 10, and the last index is number 9. So we could say print x length of x minus 1, and that is the last number in the array, and that's indeed number 4. If you do print length of x minus 2, we get the second to the last number, which is number 10. 
Now it's of course very inconvenient if you want to start counting at the end to always have to print length off and then the array name and then minus. So what Python has done is if you tell it an index that's negative, then it is exactly the same as if it would have said length of x before that. So this also gives you number minus two, uh, number 10. Or minus three um, is three from the back. This is minus one, this is minus two, this is minus three, so it should give it number two. And it does. You can also go from, from the end and count backwards. So you say print from minus one to minus five with steps of minus one. So here it says we start at this number, we end before we reach that number, and with steps of minus one. So we start at index number minus one, then we do number minus two, minus three, minus four, and we stop before we reach minus five, so we don't include that one. We can also do that in forward mode. For example, we can start at index zero, go to index 10 with steps of three. So now we get index zero, which is number one, then with steps of three. So we get index three, zero, one, two, three, that should give us the number four. Then we go three more, one, two, three, could give us the number seven. Then we get three more, one, two, three, we get number four, one, four, seven, four. That seems to work fine. An array also has a dimension and it's called ndim, x dot ndim. And in this case, the dimension is one because we have one row. But we can also make two-dimensional arrays. For example, we can say x is equal to zeros. Zeros is another way of creating a, um, an array. And I open a parenthesis and nothing happens. Anybody see yet why? Well, because Python doesn't know it's a function, because it should have been called np.zeros. If I do np.zeros and I open a parenthesis, then a little help shows up and it tells me you have to enter a shape. Well, we could enter a shape by just saying, I want five of those, print x, and you get five times the value zero. Zeros is not always that useful, sometimes it is. We could also use a function that's called once, that gives us five once. We can even multiply that with something. Seven times once gives us seven, five sevens in a row. Um, but like I said, we can make two-dimensional arrays, so we can also specify some other shape. You could, for example, say you want to have three rows and five columns. And notice that the 3,5 is um, specified as a tuple, so it's between parentheses, three rows, five columns, 15 numbers in total, print x. If we print the length of x, we get three, because there's three, um, three rows in it. If you want to now access values in x, we have to specify two indices, the index of the row and the index of the column. For example, we could say um, x row zero, column zero, so that's the upper left-hand number, we make that the number 10, and we print x. I see, it has changed here to 10. Let's get rid of the length term. Um, or we can change the entire first row of x by saying zero, comma, and then all the columns by that. Now, if you print x, the entire first row has changed to tens. Um, in fact, it's very nice syntax <clears throat> is that if you want to have all columns, you don't even have to specify it. You could just say x zero is a value that's like now in a different value, say it's a uh, 101, you see, then that this syntax here changes all the rows to 101. What if we want to, after that, change column 0, 1, column 2 to, for example, 20? We say x, all rows, column 2, the column with index 2, and I wanted to make it 20. And then we want to print it so you can actually see it worked. So this, the output is right here. Now this column here has changed to 20. We can also make a whole range of rows and columns 
change to a different value. We could say x from 0 to 2, so that the 0, row 0 and 1, and columns 1, 2, 4, so that's 1, 2, and 3, and make that the value of 4, 4, 4. We print x. So this is a part of the array of columns 0 and 1, not including 2. So row 0 and 1, and columns 1 to 4, 1, 2, and 3. So it's this little box that's going to change once we do that. And see there, indeed, it's rows one and two, 0 and 1, and columns 1, 2, and 3 that have gotten that value. I could have also said, well, instead of 4, 4, 4, we say we make it an array of 4, 4, 4 times once, and it's two rows and three columns. And once is called of course, np dot once. Ooh, that doesn't quite give us the right thing. I, what did I do wrong? Oh, I said it's three rows and three columns. It gives us the error message. Could not broadcast input error of shape three three. This sh shape is three three into shape two three because I said well it should be assigned to a part of the x-array which is two rows and three columns. It cannot do that. It doesn't know how to assign an array with three rows and three columns to an array of two rows and two columns. And quite frankly, I don't know how to do that either. But if we would have specified it correctly, if we would have specified it two here, then it would have worked just fine. Next, I want to change values in an array based on a condition. Let's first make a new array y is equal to np dot a range of 20 print y that creates one array with 20 values from 0 through 19 and i'm going to reshape that array i say y is equal to reshape np dot reshape which tells us give us the array you want to reshape and a new shape i want to make this array which is now one row of 20 values in five rows or four rows, five columns. There we go, four rows, five columns. What I wanted to do now is change all the values that are less than, for example, seven to a different value, maybe zero. How do I do that? I say y. I open the square brackets for the index, and instead of specifying the indices, I specify a condition. I say where y is smaller than seven, I want to change all the values to zero and then print y again. You see? And it worked pretty nicely. All values less than seven are changed to zero. We can add another, another condition. We can say print or not print y for all the y values larger than uh, 15. We want to specify 100. There you go, all the values larger than 15 are 100. Finally, let's try to change all the values that are larger than 10, but smaller than 14 to a different number. So there are two conditions. Y for Y larger than 10, and you're gonna to have to put that first condition between parentheses before you can add the second one, and y smaller than 14 all those values I'm gonna change to for example 77 and you see indeed all values larger than 10 but smaller than 14 are changed to 77 that's all I got for you today I hope to see you next time